Hello guys, welcome back to my channel once again. It's your boy Stylon One, as you always know. And today we are here with another episode to react on the video of one of our young Pan Africans. You always know. I always like following youths that are doing wonders for Africa. I always like following people who are standing for the betterment of Africa and people who are seeing the interests of Africa than personal interests. It's no other person, as you always know, the new rising, the new rising African, Pan-Africanist is nobody else but Usman Toure. This one, I'm not going to talk much, but please make me a favor. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell for more videos. And uh, let's get into it. And I'm not going to say much because we all know we have to hear things from good young youths like this and learn a lot of things from them and be more educative and know how you are going to take your, uh, take your step in moving your country forward. So let's take a look at this video. I'm going to play for you and we all enjoy and you are going to tell me in the comment section how you feel about the video and what do you learn from the video. Take a look. One of the most misused terms in exploiting the continent today have been globalization. That Africa needs outsiders. And by globalization, I mean globalization in ideas, globalization in culture, and globalization in trade. Tell me in what way does Africa benefit in these three things? The globalization of ideas. But yet we are made to think one way. And what I see with globalization is globalization of Western ideas and Western values with Africa lacking behind. We have been made to less appreciate the thinking and thoughts that have been locally initiated to think that Africans cannot have the right mind to think for themselves. Again, when it comes to globalization of a culture, what is there in the African continent in our culture that is highly appreciated and embraced by the rest of the world and they are teaching their children today about the continent of Africa? It's of course no. What we see is a fact that cultural globalization is going in one way. Where Africa is in the receiving ground, we receive all form of cultures and making us less appreciative of our own culture. Today young people within the continent will hold and reference the Kim Kardashians, the Nollywood stars, paying less regard to their own community leaders. And the trends of the globe today is set by these very individuals. Are we then patriotic and are we ready to be the solution for the continent? This is a question that we must answer if we want to move ahead and if we really want to solve problems in the continent and not no longer be the peddlers of problem but the merchants of solution as in Professor Jibril Fall's word. Again, one of the things that the continent have been exposed to is the fact that with these governance system, with the trading systems imposed as a result of globalization, I believe our elders sitting here can tell us about the structural adjustment plan introduced by the IMF and the World Bank. It has been one of the greatest or the biggest instrument used by the outsiders to make Africa as a continent less developed, poor continent, less appreciative of thinking and policies and as well as grassroots initiatives. The structural adjustment plan have impoverished all African countries in the sub-Saharan region by making them prioritize their spending on things that are beneficial to the Western markets and to the Western politicians. Again, not only that, but today we feel happy to be with brands that are Western and of Western values than our own. And this is as a result of the trade that we have ventured in. One thing also that is certain, the misunderstanding of the ideologies that we embrace, the misunderstanding of the religions that we belong to today, the rejection of our own traditional spirituality, 
have resulted into a disunity along the continent and in this young people are affected the most as we are sitting here discussing about the future of the continent as young individuals there are a group of young africans in some way looking at another african as a threat and if they have the chance to take their life they will do so and these are the same individuals that we need if we want to move ahead by transforming their minds and thinking into solutions and understanding that Africa as a continent needs to prosper as any other continent in the world. Again, we have to understand that as young people, sometimes we are trapped with the notion that we are young, so therefore we cannot act now, we have to wait. The question is, what and who are we waiting for? We have to think good in ourselves. We have to start appreciating Africa as a continent. We have to start thinking solution and meeting in occasions like this to have a dialogue, intergenerational dialogue, dialogues across the continent as young people in developing solutions that holds the fact that Africa is not a threat to herself, but we are a force that needs to work together to register the development that our continent desire. Today, in so many instances, we have seen global partners, big companies, coming down to the continent, exploring our own resources, using our own individuals as agents and as instrument to dominate our societies. And this is a living proof. Torado and Smith in development economics make mention of the comparado groups, that the white man don't have to travel the interior of Africa to extract resources any longer. They just need a young African program to do that work on their behalf. We have to understand that we are graduating engineers, we are graduating lawyers, we are graduating doctors, we are graduating individuals who should serve the interests and purpose of their communities. But today, a huge chunk of that graduates are the people that we are seeing sinking in the Mediterranean Sea. These are the same young women that we see in Arab countries being exploited and taken as modern day slaves. These are the same individuals that the continent needs to harvest their talents and potentials in making sure that we can register the development that we desire as a continent. But again, saying all this as a problem in the continent, are there no solutions? Someone may ask. The young people are the agents of change. And they are the individuals that our ancestors and our old systems have tapped in in order to make sure that they have registered success in their own development. They are apt, prolific, they are with disruptive mindset and thinking. The same young people are individuals that have the potentials to drive change and to drive growth among the continent. They are the innovators, they are the leaders, they are the workers, so therefore young people are the future. But that future starts now. Our investments must be diversified into things that are meaningful. Investment in education, and I mean real education, with potentials, with skills, and provide a ground for African youths to exhibit their talents within the continent. Again, investment in the health sector. Our mothers, our sisters, our young brothers need help and need attention. And they need us. So we therefore have to channel our skills in these very societies in making sure that we can give them the development and the need that they have. However, when we look at the continent, to some, it may seem impossible to fix it. It is not yet impossible. We, the youths, have to take responsibilities. And to do that, we must start questioning 
we must start questioning as young people questioning the political system questioning the education system questioning our social livelihood and being part of the solution the world where these things have happened things have also been questioned so we must question the violence against black people is a manifestation everywhere in Europe in the Americas and in the continent the fact that the black man becomes black only when they are in contact with the white man is sometimes bearable but really painful and the white man becoming white only when they are in Africa is painful but then it comes with all the accorded privileges that we give them I know because I've been traveling across the continent and I see privileges where individuals deliberately ignore brothers and sisters as a result of their color and appreciate individuals just by their appearance and this we must look into we must start to appreciate ourselves we must start to build respect love and unity among ourselves but again we have to be ready to unite ourselves to make sure that as young people this is not just for us to come and take selfish gain or selfish interest but a cause that we must stand to liberate the continent because we are the hope and if we don't get it right this time Africa can never make it before it was colonialist economic systems now we have technology just on the side we must be skillful we must develop potentials but we must be patriotic enough to save the trajectory for the African continent and to do this we must forget about our selfish gain it is a course out there that we must undertake we must liberate this generation of Africa and generations of Africans to come they don't deserve what we have experienced and to save that to build that we must be the agents of change and we have to be ready and I will therefore want to put this question to all of us here today that if we leave this particular hall we are going as ambassadors we are here as ambassadors of our own homes we are here as ambassadors of our own institutions and we are here as ambassadors of our own villages our own towns our own cities we have to be ambassadors of Nigeria we have to be ambassadors of Africa because we are the eyes and ears of the continent and whoever sees us should see Africa whoever sees us should see unity should see respect and should see dignity across the board this is a message that I want all of us to think and also to make actions towards we all had this together I hope we all learn something from this young guy this young talented youth this is what we should do to come together to stand and fight for Africa to defend our continent this is the only way we can move forward in uniting becoming together as one people that's the only way we can move Africa forward there are some points he touched those one touch my heart very seriously because I am one of them I can say passing through this Mediterranean Sea, seeing what happened to young, talented youths. Many young, talented youth died in the Mediterranean Sea through Libya and other Maroc, Algeria, Tunis, you can call it. And uh, the other thing is that our women that have been exploited in Arab world, domestic violence against them, that one also is something very serious that touches my heart. And I want hospitals our hospitals are very poor in Africa they are very poor and the other thing is that we like he said they use our African brothers because they know now for them coming to Africa would not be necessary but they use this technology uh, they use this way to get us 
by using our own people to exploit us or to do something to our continent while we are there we have to wake up as he said now is the time and now is the time for everything for africa to move forward thank you very much once again for watching i hope you liked the video and enjoy it thank you see you in the next video